The Tejas is like a story from an Indian soap opera rather than an aviation program. It is far too long and full of toughies. So why does India have such a hard time completing military projects unlike some other countries in the region like China and South Korea? As the weapon detective, we are investigating the Tejas and the Indian national aviation adventure. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. Talking about the Tejas is very tricky. Of course, compared to some other current fighter aircraft programs, the result is not quite satisfactory. But analyzing the Tejas could give us a real opportunity for understanding the factors that affect such a project. Before we start our analysis, let's take a brief look at the program history and the features of the aircraft. The history of the Indian indigenous fighter development adventure goes back to the 1950s. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited shortly HAL, began to work on HF-24 Marut as a Mach 2 jet fighter in 1956. However, India did not have enough technical capability and the experienced labor force to accomplish such a challenging project. So the HF-24 could not meet the requirements. The aircraft could not even reach the supersonic speed. For this reason, in 1969, India requested the development of a new jet fighter from HAL. The company completed design studies in 1975. After a long silence, these studies turned into the Light Combat Aircraft Project, shortly LCA, in 1983. Changing balances in favor of Pakistan in the region had accelerated the works. At that time, the second generation MiG-21s were the backbone of the Indian Air Force. But now, the Pakistan Air Force began to operate the fourth generation F-16s. The 1982 Lebanon War had shown that the fish beds did not have a chance against the fighting falcons. In 1984, India established Aeronautical Development Agency to manage the LCA program and HAL appointed as the prime contractor. The program was not just the development of an indigenous fighter. All of the subsystems would also be indigenous. India had failed to develop a second generation fighter. Developing a fourth generation fighter with all of its subsystems was even a bigger challenge. So India decided to acquire foreign help. For design and system integration of the aircraft, Dassault Breguet was preferred as a consultant. In the beginning, India had planned that the new aircraft would perform its first flight in 1990 and become operational in 1995. But as usual, things didn't go as planned. In 1990, only the basic design phase was completed. India partnered with Lockheed Martin to support developing the indigenous fly-by-wire flight control system in 1992. The rest of the story is known. Difficulties in the development of many subsystems caused delays. The partnerships were broken and re-established. The Indian Air Force had to purchase Su-30 and Rafale due to the prolongation of the project. Thus, the LCA program lost its priority. Budget cuts hit the works. The design criteria defined in the 1980s lagged behind the developing technology. Therefore, the design has been updated several times. With each update, the schedule of the redetermined program was extended once again. Before the aircraft even became operational, HAL had to begin the work on the advanced variants. Many indigenous subsystem development programs, such as engine and radar, were failed. If it was not for the national pride, the project would have probably been cancelled long ago. During this problematic process, in 2003, the LCA was officially named Tejas. The aircraft performed its first flight on January 4, 2001. The Indian Air Force was handed over the first operational Tejas in 2015. The Tejas is a multi-role fighter which has the tailless compound delta wing design. It is highly agile. The design provides some degree of stealth, especially in the frontal aspect. Composite materials make up 45% of the airframe by weight and 90% by surface area. Extensive use of composites also helps reducing radar cross-section. Also, many parts of the aircraft are coated with radar absorbent materials. The Tejas Mark 1 variant has a hybrid version of the ELM-2032 radar. 
The first batch of 20 TGIS Mark 1A will have an improved version of the ELM-2052 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. This version is developed jointly by Alta Systems and HAL. The Indian Air Force is planning to equip the later 63 Mark 1As with domestically developed Uttam Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. Now, HAL is working on the Mark II variant. The Indian Navy abandoned its plan for acquiring the ship-based variant of the Tejas. So HAL began to work on a new twin-engine fighter based on the Tejas for the Navy. The Mark I variant of the Tejas has a length of 13.2 meters, a wingspan of 8.2 meters and a height of 4.4 meters. Its wing area is 38.4 square meters. The empty weight of the aircraft is 6,560 kilograms while its maximum takeoff weight is 13,500 kilograms. One 90 kilonewton GE404 F2 JIN20 afterburning turbofan engine provides a maximum speed of Mach 1.6. It can climb an altitude of 16,500 meters. The aircraft can reach a range of 3,200 kilometers. The Tejas combat radius is 500 kilometers. The aircraft has one 23mm twin-barrel GC-23 internal gun and eight hardpoints. Currently, the Tejas can carry the R-73, Derby and Piton-5 air-to-air -air missiles, Ha-35 and Ha-59 air-to-surface missiles, as well as rocket pods and different types of bombs. Soon, the aircraft will gain the capability of launching AIM-132 ASRAM, Astra, R-77 air-to-air, Brahmos NG anti ship and Trudrum anti radiation missiles. Now, let's begin to analyze why the Tejas program has experienced such problems. Of course, comparing the Indian aviation industry's capability with the Western ones is unlogical. They are not in the same league. But China, for example, managed to develop a fourth generation J 10 in a short time. Also, the South Korean KF 21 program progresses smoothly. What are the differences between them? First of all, founding a country is quite different from playing a real-time strategy game. Gathering resources and doing upgrades are not enough to build up an industry. To have an efficient industry, a country needs lots of things, such as organizational experience, tradition, trained manpower, money, infrastructure, market, good political relations, internal stability, and knowledge. They all take time. These three countries have different backgrounds. China experienced a colonial period for a short time. The fact that Beijing has a deep-rooted state tradition makes the Chinese bureaucracy more efficient and well-organized. Of course, we do not intend to offend the Indian people. But if we look at the facts, throughout the history, India was a name of a region, not a country. In fact, India has a state tradition for less than a century. Unfortunately, the long-term colonial experience caused some handicaps, which created less effective bureaucracy and some organizational problems. South Korea also experienced these type of handicaps. Still, this Asian country managed to have a more efficient aviation industry. Well, how? After the independence, India chose a more defensive and non-aligned foreign policy due to its bad memories from the colonial time. So. The Indian people had to learn how they can build a modern nation by themselves. This was a long and hard process. But South Korea was built up by the USA as a forward fort. In a possible war against communism, this newly established country had to be strong and efficient. Thanks to growing cooperation with the West, Seoul has leveled up quickly and easily. After the Second World War, the gigantic population of China was always a deterrent factor for foreign invaders. And when the Red Dragon tested its first atomic bombs in 1964, they no longer had any fear of invasion. Yes, India also had a gigantic population as a deterrent factor. Yet, a big part of this population was the Muslims. After the independence, the main threat was Pakistan, founded by the Muslim Indians. So a possible Pakistani victory could cause the dissolution of India or at least the loss of a big territory. So, while Beijing felt safe, Delhi was on edge. India does not have the luxury of waiting. When a domestic weapon development program is behind schedule, 
the Indian Armed Forces has to acquire it from a foreign source. For this reason, many programs have lost their priority repeatedly. This is the biggest stalemate of the Indian defense industry. Indian domestic naval programs are the exception. The Pakistan Navy is not a match of the mighty Indian Navy. So, India has patiently waited to conclude its national naval programs instead of direct acquisitions. China has adopted a different game. The Chinese engineers have copied all the weapon systems that they can reach. Beijing did not hold back from corporate espionage either. Some sources claim that even the J-10 program, which is more successful than the Tejas, is nothing but the fruit of a secret cooperation with Israel. As a matter of fact, this aircraft highly resembles the Lavi. This policy has leveled up the Chinese military industry. Unlike China, India had tried to play honestly. Delhi has always shown respect the intellectual rights and its agreements with other countries. But because of dishonesty, the Indian defense industry has stayed slightly behind the Chinese. As a faithful ally of the West, Seoul has grasped the necessary technology transfer. Also, the USA permitted some minor intellectual right breaches. South Korea has easily become one of the leading high-tech defense systems producers. India has never had such support. Also, as we mentioned in our T-50 Golden Eagle video, South Korea started its aviation industry adventure by developing simpler aircraft and initiated its more complex fighter works later. KAI has reached the current level step by step. But India started with the most compelling ones. Before overcoming the baby steps, HAL tried to run. China and South Korea are more industrial countries than India. Beijing and Seoul have used their industrial infrastructures to support their defense industries. But India has to build up some subcontractors first to improve its national defense industry. China wants to change the world order. So Beijing has an aggressive policy. To support this policy, the Chinese defense industry has to develop systems which can compete with the Western systems. The challenge always paves the way for advancement. In contrast, the main concern of India is to preserve the current situation. So, Dalhi does not have an aggressive motivation as Beijing has. Lack of aggression causes a slower advancement. In the light of these differences, we can say that the unsatisfactory performance of the Tejas program was inevitable. We have to repeat ourselves that we do not intend to offend the Indian people. Of course, our analysis is subjective to some degree and controversial. We would be happy to hear counter-arguments. The Tejas is not a bad aircraft, but we have to admit that the program has many setbacks. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.